Hey, what's going on everyone? Spikes you here, or Spikes and you. Today we're going to address a very common question that's commonly asked, which is, well, should I join an alliance? You might be someone returning as you can expect that there will be a lot of people returning here with version two. And this is a question that people are asking and that I have been asked on multiple occasions. So I figure I'd go ahead and make a video for everyone to kind of really answer should you join an alliance to start what is an alliance an alliance is pretty much a place where players can come together in a more intimate environment and do things as a unit as a whole or just have a place to chat you might know something like guilds from world of warcraft or link shells from final fantasy by the way for those who don't know my background i did play Final Fantasy 11, which uses Link Shells as well, so does 14. I played that game for 13 years. I have a heavy history in that and led some of the top in-game Link Shells in that game. So, but an alliance is going to be that same idea. So a guild or a Link Shell, or if you're not familiar with those gaming terminologies, then just imagine it, just think of it like a, like a Discord server, you know, that you go to, but it's in the game, right? So, you know, you have a group of people and there's one little thing that you can all chat, you can just chat together in that Discord server. That's what an alliance or a guild or a link shell would be. It's called an alliance in PSO NGS. That's what that is. So now that we've gotten what an alliance is out of the way, let's kind of address what the pros and cons are of joining an alliance. So that way this will answer all the questions that you really need and that you're really wanting. We'll start with the pros. First and foremost, there is the community. This is the obvious thing. Having an alliance creates an environment where you can talk to people. There's a maximum of 100 people in an alliance. So that's a lot of people that you can interact with. I'm not saying that it's going to be full. I thought everyone's always going to be on at the same time. But either way, it's a place where you can talk to people. You can chat to people. You can open up this, go to Alliance, and just start talking at any point, at any given time. Doesn't matter what zone you're in. You can talk to your Alliance members anywhere at any time whenever you want to you don't have to be in the same zone so it creates this great portal of ease of access communication so if you need help or you know you just want to chit chat you can do that and then it allows you to build bonds and that's really the big number one thing for alliances you know it's the community so you're you're making friends you're building bonds you know you're and you're, you're creating memories right that's the biggest thing for an alliance another pro would be the rewards that you can get from being in an alliance now understand that there is a ranking system for alliances if you're first ranked you get 500k if you're second to 10 i believe it's the second to 10 slots you get 300k this is every week you get this every week and if i think it's maybe 11 to 20 or 11 to 30 or something like that you're going to get 100k every week so that's incentive also as well however don't make that your primary focus as the real focus should be on joining an alliance that is a community that fits you that's the biggest thing. But those alliance leaderboards are an incentive to join an alliance because you get benefits. And we'll touch on that also a bit more later on. Another pro, sometimes Sega will give types of in-game rewards for people who are in alliances, such as the current one, the team up campaign, get a rappy song by joining an alliance. So this is the song that you will get. And this simply just by joining an alliance. It's simple as that so sometimes sega will do stuff like that that's also incentive to be in an alliance and that's the pro for it that's a pro for it one of the biggest things is help though help that's one of the biggest things is because being in an alliance you have a resource of people around you that you can easily reach out to to ask questions to get information on to share ideas with to just anything and all the above and let's be honest all MMOs, most massively multiplayer online games, all MMOs are better enjoyed with people. All of them. The, the, that's what MMOs are. They're built to, to promote having a community, to promote engaging with others. That's what, that's, that's like the sole purpose of MMOs. So, and they're all more enjoyable when you are doing that. So keep that in mind. Also with Alliance leaderboards, you will be able to get SG. However, there are changes to this that will be in effect. So by the time you're watching this video, these should be in effect as they will take effect June 7th of 2023. And these won't really rely on you being in an alliance board leader spot. All it really just matters for you is just being in an alliance. There will be alliance tests every week that you can do. These can go towards your alliance ranking, but in general, you would get alliance badges for completing these tasks. You get these from this NPC, Tim. 
if you accept these as you can see all these look at but you will see these and these will refresh every week it says alliance batch one right here but by the time that you're watching this it will have changed and all of these will give alliance batch two and this is important because this is how you're going to get sg so every week you can trade in these badges and you can obtain sg and so as you can see here, this is what you should be looking at. This is how the Alliance Badge Exchange Shop will work. It's going to work. It's working now as you're watching this video. Is that the Alliance Badge times one will get you 10 SG. This can be used up to twice per week. So if you look down here, as I just mentioned, after the adjustment, this is going to be two. So as of now, as of June 7th, 2023, you will get two per task. So you get two, that's the two right there. You get 10 SG twice per week. And then you also have the five SG option, which adds to a total of 30. As you can see down here, these were discontinued. This was what the previous reward was for having gold first place alliance rank. So now this allows everyone to get 30 SG a week, regardless of your rank. So this is also something that's very important to note and a very strong incentive to be part of an alliance whether or not it's even ranking or not you can just do this to do your alliance task and get your alliance badges also as well understand that you do have to complete at least three alliance tasks there are nine tasks total per week but you do need to complete at least three tasks in order to get rewards from the alliance if your alliance is ranking so if you do not complete at least three tasks you will not be able to obtain any of those rewards that your alliance is getting for being in gold silver or bronze ranks so now what are the cons well the first con the biggest con is also it can also be a pro but this is the biggest con is that you need to pick an alliance that suits you that's the biggest thing because it's easy to just like in anything in life it's easy to put yourself into this group of people and then they don't really suit you and then they kind of ruin your playing experience right so that's the one thing about being in an alliance that could be a huge con it's very important that you pick your alliance properly because if you don't you might find yourself not enjoying the game because you're dealing with this you're dealing with the stress of this and maybe their their views just don't align with how you play the game so make sure you're picking the right alliance and there's lots of different alliances lots of different types of alliances whether they focus on fashion focus on anime or they're more competitive whatever there's lots of different alliance types that you can be involved in so make sure that you're taking that into consideration as you choose to join an alliance to piggyback on top of this on the cons is that negative tendencies can wear on you as well this can happen so this can be a con for alliances if the alliance is as a very negative alliance a very toxic alliance and maybe you're not a toxic person or just in general you know being around these people so much you might feel as if you're pressured to act a certain way or you know react a certain way to things and you know they try to push that energy on you but that's pretty much going to apply in the aspect of life when there's a large group of people so you just have to be wise about that and understand that try not to be led too much by others and how they're acting if you know that what is going on is not necessarily what you approve of you know don't just kind of don't just kind of flow with the water with that that can be dangerous but that's of course a um a risk you take a con that can be for alliances so keep that in mind as well those are pretty much the two biggest cons however let's dive into some questions that you probably have or that you need answered first and foremost how do you join an alliance? Well, is you want to open up the menu, go to communications, and they come down here to search for currently recruiting alliances. That's the easiest way you could do it. You'll see in here that all of these will have definitions about the alliance. So you can kind of look through here. You can see the ones that are kind of most active. Members logged in within the past hour. You can, you know, you can change the search functions here so that way it kind of gives you an idea of what kind of the activity of the alliance but these will all give you you know the kind of general idea of what the alliance is about you can contact these people from there that's really the best way to do that some of these alliances do have systems that they implement where you have to go through their discord or something more intricate however you know of course that's another step most alliances don't do that just use this page this is how you're going to see which alliances are actively recruiting and get an idea of which alliances that you can join note that if you would like to check the rankings of the alliances while you're trying to figure out which alliances you want to apply to or you would like to be in because you're kind of looking maybe you're competitive and you would like to be in that top ranking slot one of those top uh, alliances that way you're also getting that set of benefit then the way that you're going to do that is to simply open up the menu go to personal go to arcs records go to alliance task records and this will show you the rankings if you press the r button 
on your keyboard. If you press R, this will show you the rankings currently of all the people who are ranked on the Alliance board. Of course, the best way to really go about that though, is that if you already have a friend who's playing and they're in the Alliance, so you have friends that are playing in there in an Alliance, then, you know, of course you probably want to go where your friend is at. They can hit you with a reference. And that's of course the more idealistic way, right? But we're not going to assume that everyone just has friends playing in this game, that people come in solo without knowing anyone, such as myself. I came into this game solo, not knowing anyone. So this is a great way to go about that and get yourself into an alliance and see what the alliances are and kind of what they're about. You can ask around and see what the alliances are about, get more information on them as you see members. Also, I guess going into that, keep in mind that if you go to this menu, you can toggle character overhead display. And so if you go here, you can actually change this out where you can see alliances. I think when default is just like character name or something like that, right? So you can go down here, you can see character name and the alliances. So we'll show you the alliances. And as you go around the blocks and stuff like that, you'll see characters with the alliance names on them. Maybe you can ask them, hey, can I speak to one of your officers or can I get a better idea of the alliance? So people are usually pretty open about, about stuff like that because I mean, they want to recruit, right? So. A big one I get also is I'm not very social. Should I join an alliance? This is a great question, actually, because honestly, it does not. It's not going to harm you too greatly, depending on the alliance that you join, depending on how they work. You know, if they're a super social alliance and that's like part of the requirement, then yes, that might be an issue. However, the alliances as they're built, as they work currently in NGS, you, there's not really a whole lot of alliance content, you know, like like raids or something like that, that you would see in other games where you have the whole alliance going into a, a, a an instant zone and, you know, fighting all these super strong enemies. There's nothing really like that for alliances in NGS. And as such, you don't really need to do things with your alliance if it's, you know, if you really don't want to and if they're okay with that right all the alliance tasks can be completed by yourself even like the purple triggers you can just go to that you can choose a rank one so that way super low level mobs and you can do that task as well all those tasks can be completed solo if you really want to you can queue into a a public urgent quest you know just a uh, the, the 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 standard queue so you can entirely be not social and still be part of alliance to get the alliance perks depending on you know like i said if the alliance is okay with that you know if they're alliance that's obviously like yo we're super social that's part of the requirements you have to speak you have to talk then of course that doesn't work but from a sense of how the game works it's it's not a problem because there's not really alliance content currently in the game that being said in august there will be quests that are introduced that will capitalize on high level monsters and parties that go in there and fight these monsters so either way this still isn't going to be your whole 100 people of the alliance doing this but there will be kind of high-end in-game content that will revolve more so around having a party and having kind of a strategy and people who are properly geared so that's going to be the closest that we get to alliance content in that regard so even still if you just have some friends you have four or eight friends or something like that that you met in the game i'm sure there's going to be a queue system for that as well so short answer is just as long as the alliance is okay with it there's no problem for you being someone who's not social you can still do everything it's not going to hurt anyone plain and simple Another question is, do alliances have their own creative spaces? This is actually a great question as well. Unfortunately, no. They did state that there are not any alliance creative spaces currently. It's just everyone will have a creative space. So I guess you can have one member who has a creative space and it will work like that. Then y'all can just make that say alliance creative, creative space. But there are no official alliance creative spaces right now. Hopefully that changes in the future, but as of right now, that is not the case. Do alliances do raid type content? As I mentioned this previously briefly, there will be a new system coming out, a new quest coming out in August that will revolve around having a party that is geared and knows what they're doing and is made to work as a team to defeat these really strong bosses that will be introduced in a new system in August. We don't know the specifics on this. However, nonetheless, these will not be raids in the sense of how you would know them because this is likely just going to be two parties something like that within these quests so it's not like it's going to be a hundred people in there doing a big old raid you know so no as far as we know right now there is nothing like that that's planned for the game that's probably a little heavy for the development team right now so um i wouldn't expect something to that caliber um anytime soon hopefully this video was able to kind of answer any questions or give you a great idea a better idea 
about if you should join an alliance. You know, if you're a new person or if you're a returning player, you know, with all the changes that are coming right now. If you're a veteran player who just plays by themselves, hopefully this gives you a better outlook on if you should join an alliance. Ultimately, it's up to you, it's up to your decision, it's up to your play style, and it's up to the type of people that you want to be around. But ultimately, at the end of the day, yes, being in an alliance is very beneficial, especially if it's an alliance that competes and is in the leaderboards because you're getting free money, you're getting free Masada every week. But even beyond that, it's just great because you got people to play the game with. So that's a plus, that's a benefit always. So hopefully this helped out. Make sure you like the video and subscribe to the channel and let me know what you think of the comments. Let me know what your experiences are with alliances on your ship. What changes you might like to see or if you're enjoying the game or if you're enjoying alliances or anything of the sort. And I will see y'all in the next one. Happy hunting.